According to an American survey, America kind of sucks right now, or at least is worse than these four countries. David, what is going on? Oh, the US News and World Report basically came out with a study and they've been ranking things for about 90 years, right? They're famous for their college rankings. Internally amongst Americans surveyed, Andrew, America dropped from the best country in the world to number three and internationally, it was number four and it drank to no, uh, dropped to number five. Wow, I would say dropping from one to three in the eyes of its own people is maybe the biggest deal. So I'm a little shocked. We got to talk about why people are ranking America so low in America. So please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Real quick, we got to bring you a word from our sponsor, SmileLastSauce.com. Guys, from Sichuan to Sicily, you could put this on anything that you would normally put an olive oil on. It tastes great. Pasta, noodles, breads, proteins. I'm telling you guys, there's nothing like this on the market available right now. SmileLastSauce.com. All right, everybody. I mean, David, is this is this kind of shocking? Um, honestly, if you are a macro bird's eye thinker, and I don't think you need to be that much of a crazy, you know, Einstein, Malcolm Gladwell intellectual to really get this, people are unhappy in America right now. Right. So I guess what are the metrics that people ranked America so low on? Okay, so this is internally, the thing that dropped it from one to three internally was, Andrew, people losing trust in government practices, minus 61 spots, minus in business practices, minus 39 spots, having a favorable tax environment, minus 27 spots, and income equality, minus 21 spots. Mm. That's what caused for the gigantic rank to drop internally. So that's more reflective of how Americans feel about themselves. However, Americans rank themselves really high on international alliances and dynamic economy. That's what the rest of the world actually agreed with. However, wow. here are the spots, Andrew, that Americans rank themselves higher than other people thought. Okay. They said more affordable, more scenic, um, higher racial equity and caring about the environment. Those are the ones where Americans ranked America much higher than the international community. Right, did. so it just kind of shows that sometimes, obviously, people of the international community are viewing your country as one way, but internally you're like, I don't know, we're doing a pretty good job. And then other people are like, oh yeah, I mean, actually, you're probably overlooking this aspect. Right, because they have a different perspective. Yeah. Uh, I would say, to be honest, international people know more about America than America and Americans are know about international people. Right, but also I will say internationally, you're more likely to hear about the negative things about a country. And that probably goes for every country. Right, so right. let's go take a look at the US internal rankings, Andrew. That's what we're more focused on today. UK came in number one, New Zealand number two, United States number three, Australia four, Sweden five, Canada six, Japan seven, France eight, Switzerland nine, and Germany 10. Um, so it's kind of similar to the international ranking, but in the international, ranking Netherlands was in there got it got it got it so interesting. um Andrew interestingly enough why do you think I mean I, I I don't think it takes some sort of genius macro Malcolm Gladwell you know I understand everything from the bird's eye perspective to know that a lot of Americans right now are unhappy would you agree with this yeah they're telling I mean dude they're very unhappy especially even with politicians I think it even comes down to mistrusting the government as far as what the government tells you I do think the the amount of conspiracy theories and the fact like was 9-11 inside job, all this other stuff, COVID vaccine stuff that contributes to people distrusting the government, uh, distrusting the elites, you know, rich men of Richmond, Anthony Oliver said it well in his song, kind of people echoing a lot of feelings that people oh, have. Oh, you're talking about uh, BlackRock, Vanguard, these right. things that people are, are always pointing out, like free companies, they own everything, yeah. left and right. You, you trace it all back up to the top, look at the money. Exactly. Also, distrust of each other, obviously, and distrust of a lot of immigrants coming in, whether that's mm. undocumented or like different minorities, like uh, Heritage Americans, whether they're white or black, may not feel like that minorities or immigrants are on the same page or as them. They may not be assimilating at the rate or, or in the style that they were in the 1970s, for yeah. sure, right? 50 years later. Yeah, and then also, I mean, I would say everybody agrees, though, that if you're poor and ambitious that America is still a great country to come to. Yeah, it ranked number one in dynamic economic it, agility, it, it, both internally and globally. It is true, but also on like, you know, terms of safety or what it seems like stability and controversy it just seems like we got a lot in America right now. So I think that's why a lot of people are like, hmm, you know, I don't really know if I would, if I would rank America number one overall, you know, it right. seems like life in Switzerland or Canada might just be more chill. Although I do love the amount of money I can make in America. How much do you think 
it is just like individual positioning because everybody who's polled, Andrew, it's not like they're a professional bird's eye intellectual macro thinker, right? When I mean macro, I'm not talking about macro in a photographic sense that's just up close. I'm talking about in a bird's eye. Like not everybody is a satellite tier thinker on the earth, right? Where they're analyzing this and analyzing that. They might just be thinking about their own life because let's say, for example, somebody were to go to a second world country, right? Second world country means that it's, it's still in a developing economy, um, it's not there yet, right? But you made somebody the richest person or the coolest person or the biggest, the Leonardo DiCaprio of a second world country. Wouldn't they love their life? Mm. Even though that technically is a much worse country. Yeah, yeah. And I think that whoever was polled probably, to be honest, was more in the middle class. I think that's what I'm assuming. You're talking about the bulk distribution. Of the people surveyed were probably considered the middle class of their country. Right, you're saying if you make somebody the king of any country, they're probably gonna like it. Well, they're gonna like their life even though the country might be in the dumps or struggling. Anyway, guys, let's get into the comments section. Um, Somebody said, man, Japan is great. Japan is the only uh, Asian country that's amongst the top 10 countries. They got a respectful society. They work 12 hours a day, very little crime. People listen to the laws. People follow protocol. They love rituals. Man, all that stuff that's not happening in America these days. Mm, Um, The the classic Japan argument. Once again, man, people love Japan. Um, yeah, there's trade-offs, guys, but obviously, yeah, Japan is a very different society. I encourage everybody to go check it out and study it, um, but it doesn't mean that's possible in every place on earth, to be honest. Um, somebody said, these surveys always make me wonder who in the U.S. is being polled, huh? Somebody was saying, yeah, I mean, does the U.S. deserve to be number three? And some people were saying that U.S. number three internally was too high, and some people thought that was too low. Mm, so, so I mean, I guess how much does it? It doesn't matter who was polled, right? Yeah, and it also just matters on what you feel. Obviously, this person's making a comment saying, "How can a country with daily mass shootings be ranked this high?" And it's like, yeah, again, I think it's on personal basis. If you are not affected by any of the mass shootings or you're not scared of it, then you know, essentially you're not going to count it against. America. America is a very large game map. Like if we were to use gamer terms, right? And not everybody is living in the same fishbowl. Like, and not everybody's job is to like go to travel to everybody's fishbowl and study it, right? Um, somebody said, why did the US get number three? Someone said, yeah, to me. Somebody said, yeah, you guys got to move to Texas if you think that the US ain't number one. And somebody said, what do you mean? Texas is ass. Outside of East and West Coast, the US has nothing. And then someone said, yeah, if Texas is ass, huh? What do you call San Francisco, California? That thing's falling apart. I can see the videos right here. Does it go back to the fishbowls? Yeah, man. Everybody's just living in a different America. Um, somebody said the UK being number one is wild. As someone who lives in the UK right now, I really need to know whoever made this list to be for real right now. Because I'm telling you, I must be living in the wrong UK then. So this is people from the UK being like, I, have, I don't think you Americans have any idea what's going on over here. Yeah, I think it'd be really interesting to go through all the metrics and what each country was said to be good at. Like, is... Is like housing prices better in the UK? Is like uh, crime better than in the UK? Probably crime is, but I guess. But the house is made, might be made out of like cobblestone from like 1823. Um, Somebody said, yeah, the UK probably was the best in the world a hundred years ago in 1923. Mm. And and back then, if you were anything but a white Anglo-Saxon British person, you were probably treated like a coolie of some sort. That's pretty funny. Yeah, that's funny. Somebody said uh, Japan should rank higher and there should be more other Asian countries, but this is according to Americans. Most Americans uh, will never leave the country. Right, right. I, I guess I would have expected maybe to for South Korea to crack like top 12. I don't uh, know. It, I, I looked it up. South Korea is in the top 15. Oh, okay. It's in the top 15. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, yeah. You might think there was a more comments about that. We're going to get to that and later. And what about, whoa, 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 David, what about Singapore? Where is Singapore on all these lists? Mm, I think that those places... As much as the youth know about them, I think the older people who are totally the people who would file a U.S. world and news report would not know about them. Because Singapore and South Korea, they more came up, I want to say, at least in people's consciousness, the last 10, 20 years. I mean, is it? I mean, let's just be honest. If you haven't traveled the world, aren't you just going to base it off media perception? Of course, New Zealand's up there. I'm not saying New Zealand isn't a great place, but I'm just saying... 
you don't hear anything bad about New Zealand. Right. Somebody said, well, what about Japan, huh? What's so, Japan is so good about it. You never can retire. You got to work until you die. Everything's stuck in the year 2000, even though it used to be advanced. They have no women's rights and xenophobia is rampant in the country if you're not Japanese. I mean, here's the thing, Andrew. I studied a lot about other places. All those things can be true and not affect an expat moving to Japan, right? Because yeah. they're not trying to become a Japanese citizen and become Japanese. And also, I think it affects different people differently. I mean, I mean, even if these things are true, at what level are they true? And right, do they apply to every single person? I think nowadays, man, everybody's individual positioning, and this is probably causing some of the discord and the division within countries. Nobody's really living the same life anymore. Like everybody's position, like you could be living in this country. I could be living in that same country and our lives are so different. Somebody's saying, oh my goodness, more like the UK, it's former colonies and then other friends. And somebody said, ew, it's just Western imperialists giving each other buddy awards. And then somebody said, yep, your Anglosphere with a token Asian. And someone said, God, even the Asian they included was imperialist and colonialist. Well, what does that say about being imperialist? I guess you know, as messed up as being imperialist was because you extracted so many resources from other countries, that probably does boost your country up, right? Right, made your, you well, made you want to... Yeah, Taking made, the moralism out of it or the moral uh, morality made, out of it, you make it, it makes you stronger because you're eating the souls from the weaker countries and taking their souls and their mana you're taking, and putting it into your soul. You are taking other countries' lunch money. You're being Shang Tsung yeah. from Mortal Kombat. Um, somebody was like saying, man, when I'm smoking... That good Cali weed, eating some bomb ass cheap crab curry and fresh mango with sticky rice in Bangkok. You can't tell me Thailand ain't number one, if not top three. And somebody else said, Yeah, dude, when I'm chilling out in Bali, Indonesia, or Colombia with my first world remote work income, you can't tell me this is not the best place. That's hilarious. Um, other people said, Don't ever come to Canada, guys. Our housing crisis is way too much. Our education costs a fortune. Carjacking rates are soaring to the sky everybody's running guns over the border from america and our food's getting expensive unrealistic housing markets everybody hates trudeau you guys don't come over here <laughs> uh do you think americans know anything about canada and do, do canadians really understand america i think canadians are also trying to make sure not that many americans move to canada i think they're trying to be like hey guys don't come to canada eh? it's kind of crazy but, but up here i did hear recently that a lot of uh, canadians are unsatisfied hey man people in america have been unsatisfied yeah, so it depends, it guys. What does it all mean? But if if you're the one shape shifting the system to your benefit, maybe you're like, oh, I love it. Um, somebody was saying, oh my goodness, all these liberal policies have ruined all these countries due to immigration. Of course, this is more of a conservative feeling or mm. generalized talking point. Of course, the, the the tonage could vary to be more moderate or more extreme, but that's generally uh, a conservative versus, I guess, liberal split. In any new world country, right, right? or any English speaking country, is exactly. immigration. Exactly. Yeah. So, Andrew, what are we thinking about now, man? We could go on and on. There was so much arguing, and people are going tit for tat, point for point. I guess these are just the classic arguments of 2023 right now that almost everything boils down to. Yeah. I mean, I mean, let us know in the comments down below what you think is the best country. Now, obviously, I think just because you enjoy vacationing in a country, that doesn't make it the best country to move and live in. And become or, a citizen, right? Or, or it doesn't make it the best country to, to grow up in. Because I'm sure a lot of people in Thailand, even though Thailand is a very enjoyable place when you are a vacationing When there, you are a upper middle class to rich at least relative to that context traveler yeah right? i'm sure growing up in thailand has its own struggle so uh yeah or, I, what, what oh you guys talk about singapore so good huh you guys spend two years of your life do national service well, come on, that was a bad singapore accent guys but yeah you know what i mean like some countries that are so great like you you want to go to south korea yeah. it's great you know why americans love going there andrew they don't got to be in the military for two years well you guys let us know in the comments down below man i'd like to hear your thoughts because i know that we have uh uh, a lot of viewers who have either spent time in other countries as well. So yeah. I guess, what do you got? How do you guys feel about America? You know, one thing that helped me understand really complex things, because I realized that a lot of people who leave comments on the internet, Andrew, it's not their job to professionally understand the game map. Mm. They're just speaking professionally right. about one thing, their own life and their own impulses when they leave an impulsive comment on the internet. Like, I just think that 
it's almost like understanding stocks. You know, like sometimes the whole market's up. Sometimes the whole market's down. Sometimes it's blue chips are up and high growth tech is down. High growth tech is up. Blue chips are down. You know what I mean? Gold, real estate. There's so much commodities. Like once you understand the stock market, you can kind of understand how there's like even um, there's overall macro trends, but then there's a lot of weird nuanced ebbs and flows within the marketplace. Mm. And I think that that's kind of how I actually view country rankings. I think it's way too nuanced to sum up this way, but it could be representative of a big picture sentiment amongst the citizens. Mm. So anyway, guys, let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. One, is this study valid at all? Number two, if it is valid, what are the reasons behind it? And what do you guys think of the uh, US News and World Report that just came out? Keep it civil in the comments section below. Make sure you like the video. Until next time, we the Hop Hop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.